Good Thursday morning, everybody. Little Friday, as I like to call it, here on the Sam Channel. Here's my weather for this Thursday, October 13th. Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, all sponsored by Ace Hardware Marketplace. It uh, was great to finally see some rain. It had been one month and one day since we had had measurable rainfall here in Bowling Green. And yesterday, even some thunderstorms as forecast, all that now is out of the way. And a cold front is making its way across the area this morning. And uh, you can see the front, which is about to move through the Bowling Green area. Uh, I know this because I can uh, feel the winds kicking up already. The, it, it is going to be, by the way, a very windy day. High fire danger today. We've got a red flag warning, and that simply means the winds are going to be strong enough and the humidities are going to be low enough to spread fires very quickly. We're in a serious situation today with that. Fire watch warning, or, or fire weather watch, I should say, for the area tomorrow because uh, we're going to continue to see gusty winds at times today. There you see the clouds departing. All the rain pretty much is gone now from the area. Uh, now that cold front not only going to bring the gusty winds today, but also uh, going to bring us um, some gusty winds and cooler temperatures. Uh, yesterday, though, it was refreshing to see some of the shower activity. And here's a look at the uh, Kentucky Mesonet Network showing just how much rain some of you received. Now, some didn't get all that much, like to the north of Bowling Green, but look further south. We picked up three-tenths of an inch plus at the Ag Expo Center Mesonet site up toward the Corvette plant, 81 hundredths. That's a pretty good rainfall. Uh, officially at the airport, two-tenths of an inch of rain, but we've had some more added even after midnight. Uh, you see over an inch of rain in Scottsville in Allen County during the past 24 hours, and then you see anywhere from a half inch to almost a quarter inch to almost an inch out to the east with some of the stronger storms yesterday. Some of those turned severe with a little bit of damage, even some hail, with some of those. And remember yesterday I said there might be one or two severe storms that reach those limits, but I wasn't looking at a widespread severe weather situation yesterday. But it was just good to finally get some rain. And that was badly needed. Not enough to really put us where we need to be, but we'll take it. Here's a look at temperatures. You can tell the cold front in its way through this morning because uh, look at the temperatures out ahead of the front in the upper 50s to low 60s now we're starting to see some 40s and low 50s just west of Bowling Green we're still at 58 but get ready for those temperatures to fall a little bit more into the low 50s maybe even upper 40s as you head to work this morning those winds are starting now to gust a bit to 20 miles per hour and those winds are going to be with us all day today, uh, starting to, uh, you know, hit us with some of that cooler air. Uh, in fact, let's check the winds right now. Current wind gusts. Yeah, look, this is the direction, the arrows indicating the direction. You can see the front right there. As we shift from west, southwest winds, rather calm, to a more steer wind out of the northwest at 17 to 12 to 14 to 19, almost 20 miles per hour. That is the cold front exactly coming through at five o'clock here this morning. It's that's I love that about the Kentucky Mesonet. You can see in real time how things are progressing. You can see cold fronts, you can see temperature changes, you can see pressure changes. It's all just just right there uh, on uh, right in front of you. It, it really is something uh, to see. Okay, and you did see it. Here's a, <laughs> here's a look at temperatures, the forecast temperatures as we start to drop now. Uh, starting out, some of you close to 60, we're going upper 50s. And we're going to start to see everything came down just for a few 
hours maybe, and then bounce back into the mid to upper 60s. That's it today, and it's going to be quite windy. Winds are going are going to come from the west and northwest, 10, 20, 30 miles per hour. Yesterday, we had some gust of 40. Expect that again today, but this time with sunshine and a few departing clouds this morning to start. But we'll get up into the upper 60s, we'll say around 70 for a high. Tonight, the winds will relax and we'll drop down to, well, around 40 probably 40, 41, maybe even colder in a couple of places that get into the upper 30s, like you see E-Town at 39. Some of the outlying areas may get cold enough for maybe a touch of frost, but the winds won't completely relax or go calm, so we may be okay there. Uh, Tomorrow we'll go back into the 60s near 70, maybe even low 70s. It'll be another breezy day, but not quite as breezy as uh, what we experienced yesterday and what we are seeing so far this morning with the winds. Now, I do want to show you, where did I put it? Okay, wind. Speaking of wind, let me show you this. Uh, Wind predictor showing, this is right now, showing some of the winds coming through uh, at 10 to 15 to 20 miles per hour as this cursor, you can see there goes over a particular area. You can watch the number change, like 29 miles per hour, 30. You know, it, it, it just changes as I move around geographically through the area. So let me put this into motion. We go through the morning, winds 15 to 20 to 25. Maybe in the afternoon, even some 30 mile per hour wind gusts coming in. You can see them there just kind of showing up especially along the Ohio and the Wabash rivers. But from time to time, we're going to have those gusts of uh, 30 miles per hour, maybe even more than that. And then there's tonight with the winds finally uh, relaxing um, as high pressure takes over and we get past the cold front, uh, which is why we're getting uh, a lot of the wind this morning. Okay, let's go to the maps and I'll show you what's ahead for us. Surface map showing two cold fronts. Remember, I talked about this yesterday. Uh, the first one brought the rain. The second one is bringing on the chillier air and the gusty winds. So we go through the day. That second front kind of dissipates into more of a short wave, a little trough, a little disturbance. But all it's going to do is really just reinforce the uh, more... Uh, Arctic air that's taking over. Here we go into uh, tonight, into Friday, Friday afternoon, Friday night, Saturday. Here comes another cold front. It's going to tap into some available Gulf moisture. Again, we're not looking at a lot of rain, kind of like yesterday where we get a hit of rain and then it moves on. This will be kind of the same deal, but it looks like it will be Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening, And here we are on Sunday morning with ripples of low pressure riding along the front. If the front stalled out, that would be beneficial to us and that we would get more of a continual soaking rainfall. But this one's in a hurry like the last one that came through yesterday. And so it's going to move on. And behind that is another backdoor cold front. And this is the one that touts with it or brings with it the first major Arctic blast of air for the season. So as we get into Monday and Tuesday, look at the look at the mix here. That purple is a mix of rain and snow. Um, maybe a little icy condition or two. Pennsylvania, West Virginia, Ohio, most of Michigan, uh, Wisconsin, uh, it even northern Indiana. As we get into Tuesday, mix of rain and snow, and then there's Wednesday. That Arctic high is just sitting right on top of us, and that means cold, ladies and gentlemen. Not cool, cold conditions, as you'll soon see with the 10-day model viewer. This is going to uh, really bring us that chill in the air, not just the chill, but 
frosty conditions again next week, at, at least at the uh, onset of next week. But we go from 70 or near 70 today to 73, low 70s tomorrow, mid 70s Saturday. Then here comes that next chance of rain Saturday night into Sunday, low 70s. Then the shot of Arctic air coming in 60. That's it. Only near 60 on Monday. Look at that, 54 on Tuesday with a low of 29. That would put us uh, in hard freeze category, and I mean widespread killing frost. We haven't had that yet. We've had some freeze and we've had some frost, but we haven't had the killing freeze. And I think we will. It looks like Monday night, or no, I'm sorry, Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, as highs will only be in the 50s, lows will be in the 20s for the first time this season. So I would prepare uh, for maybe a touch of frost as we get into Monday night, uh, but more so into Tuesday night into Wednesday morning. I think that's going to be our hard freeze first one of the season as we dip into the 20s. Then we rebound back into the 60s. Very pleasant after that uh, for high temperatures and then 30s and 40s for low temperatures as we continue on into next week and next weekend. It's going to get cold. You think that's what I said yesterday. Remember I said some of you think it's cold now or these little cold snaps is cold, but it's not cold yet. It's going to get cold. All right. Enjoy the day. Just watch out for the winds. No burning. Even with that rain yesterday, fire weather watch in effect, red flag warnings. That means zero burning because of the amount of weeds and dry fuel that we have out there. Low humidity today, Humidities are only going to be in the, or dew points in the 20s and 30s. Therefore, with the low humidity winds in the 30 mile per hour range, that's going to spread a brush fire. Even with some of the wet weather we picked up yesterday, it's just not a good idea. Enjoy the day. Thank you for watching. As always, God bless you. Headed to the radio station, Sam 107. And on that note, I'll see you on the radio.